This is the last lecture for this retreat. Tomorrow, you can go home. <laughs> Wherever we stay, feel very comfortable. That's our home. That's why we learn these uh, four noble truths uh, to reach our true home. This is the, the fourth noble truth, the path to cease suffering is not the way that we walk with our feet. It is the path we walk with our mind. I talked, we studied the right view, right thought, right speech. So the next one, right action. Buddha said, beings are the owner of their actions, the heirs of their actions. They spring from their actions are bound to their actions and are supported by their actions. Whatever these they do, good or bad, of those they shall be heirs. If the right thought is related with our mind, right speech is related with our mouth, then Right action is related with our body. Our thoughts are very powerful, but our words may be more powerful. I can hate somebody, but it's different from say something very nasty to that person. But Far more powerful is our action. It's like uh, hitting that person. Since the karmic consequence of our action is very grave, so one of the eight for the path is uh, right action or right conduct. Or when you read uh, the Buddhist precepts, the code of conduct, then the first precepts are related with our wholesome action. What is right action? Wise, compassionate action, the action that benefits ourselves as well as others, etc. But Buddha said, ultimately, the right action is the action that lead us as well as others to reach Buddhahood. That is right action. In that sense, uh, spreading the Dharma is one of the best right action. Hmm? Hmm. Buddha said, there is no gift like giving of the Dharma. Friendship in Dharma, association in Dharma. We do not know what is the uh, right action sometimes. We are not quite sure. As I said in the morning, most of the suicide bombers think they will go to heaven because of their sacrifice, I was very surprised. Most of Muslims living in the United States, uh, when they interviewed with the journalists, how do you think of those suicide bombers? All of them said it's really wrong action, horrible action. But you know what? Most of the people believe they go to heaven because of that action. So, since uh, we may not sure what is the right action, just like in the 
Judeo-Christian tradition, Buddha said uh, uh, precepts. He provides the precepts, a code of conduct as a right action. For example, one undertakes not to destroy life. Second, not to take what is not given. Third, do not commit adultery. Fourth, abstain from false speech. Fifth, abstain from narcotics or liquors, etc. On the deathbed, the followers or Buddha was very sad. If his teacher passes away, if they have some question, then to whom are they supposed to ask? Who could be their teacher? When they asked that, to Buddha, Buddha replied, precepts would become your teacher. Precepts are the action of the Buddha. The meditation is the mind of the Buddha. Our founding master said, in my future absence, there will be a group of those who will become lazy of mind, will make light of the precepts, the ones who violate the precepts are those who are keeping me at a distance, and the ones who steadfastly adhere to the precepts are those who are with me. Therefore, you are to steadfastly observe the 30 precepts. In one Buddhism, uh, he gave 30 precepts. Probably 10 or 11 years ago, I went to Grand Kenya uh, with my friend who is a one Buddhist minister. He drove uh, the car. When we drove on the freeway to Grand Canyon, I saw long fence along the freeway. It's ugly. And also, it must take a lot of money to build that lengthy fence. So I asked to my friend who lived in California for a long time. He said, it is because of the desert animal. At night, when people drive their car with their head light on, they jump to the light. So many people, many animals come to become dead, and it's very, very dangerous to the people. That's why they build a long fence. Just like uh, that fence uh, help animals from being killed. The precepts works in that way. It protects us. It sounds like a big obstacle. It looks like some, some bondage. But eventually, it's what liberates us. It's not, uh, it's not necessarily kind of the commandment. In, in Judaism or Christianity. It's uh, based on the right view or understanding. It's based on the karmic principle of cause and effect. That's why King Nahan, instead of saying precepts, he said five mindfulness. He retranslated that in that way. So he asked people, what is the consequence of a killing? What is the consequence of a sexual misconduct or lying or stealing? It's basically for our own benefit in the long run. 
so Reverend Cho, he just uh, <laughs> arrived here. When he and I worked in the Philadelphia, one temple, one day, Philadelphia, one temple, have a very uh, high ceiling, and uh, it has uh, lots of a window. One day, a sparrow entered inside the temple. I think it's a Saturday. So the sparrow looked panicked, and he tried to go outside of the building, but he could not discover the exit. He just fried the rod in the ceiling. So we better catch that sparrow and release that outside. So somebody brought some net. And the ceiling is very high. It's very hard to catch that bird. It constantly flew away. It's very fast. We try to help that sparrow but it constantly moved away from the net repeatedly. So when I saw the scene, it's just like the human mind. Human mind. So Buddha said the precepts are ladder to climb to Buddhahood. If you have wings, you can fly, but most of the People do not have wings, so we have to use a ladder. The fifth thing, right livelihood or right vocation. These days, people spend a lot of time, most of the time in their workplace. In Korea or Japan, people working in big corporations like so Samsung, Sony, they work at least 10 hours. So many times uh, they identify themselves with their occupation. The success over or failure in their life. Which times is identified with the success or failure in their job. In that sense, uh, having some wholesome livelihood is uh, very important because uh, we are a product of our environment. We are influenced by the people around us, uh, by our external conditions. Even though we are very serious uh, practitioner, our mind uh, can become centered and become independent from other people, but still we are influenced by other people. So one day, when Buddha walked with his uh, uh, disciple Ananda, his uh, cousin, they spot a straw, a straw, and Buddha asked Ananda, pick up that straw and smell it. Ananda smelled it and said, wow, it smells like fish because uh, it was uh, used to bind uh, fish in all the days. When he walked, uh, when they walked several more miles, uh, they saw some, another straw and Ananda smelled it. Uh, then it smelled like uh, incense. Hmm? incense because it was uh, used to bind the bundle of incense. Straw is a straw. Fish is a fish, it's a different thing. Straw is a straw. Incense is incense. When they come together and stay together for a long time, they are influenced by other. Even though the insentient beings are influenced, how much more with our mind? Some of my friends are lawyers, some are stockbrokers. But... 
they really seem like being influenced by their occupation. Their personalities are really shaped in that way. When I saw the animal planet, they said, we know hyena, it's one of the most fearsome, very uh, uh, ferocious animal. You know what? When hyena is raised in a zoo, when it's a, since it's a puppy and it's a cherished and loved, and it does not have any worry to kill any animal. So zookeeper provide the food regularly then. It becomes so nice and docile animal. I was very surprised. Yeah. We are influenced by our environment or external condition, especially by what we do. That's why right livelihood is very important. Our founding master said, a person must be discriminating in the choice of an occupation. Of all occupations, the best is the Buddha's enterprise of correctly guiding the minds of all sentient beings and delivering them from the sea of suffering to paradise. The sixth path is right effort. There is a Korean saying, there may be salt on the table, but to make your food salty, you have to put it in your food. However, we know the right speech, right action, right livelihood is important. With our, our, without our actual effort, nothing will become fruitful. Knowing the path is different from walking the path, actually. Many people, many mountaineers know the path to Mount Everest, but a very small number of mountaineers who actually climb to Mount Everest. Some people are successful in their career, in their relationship, etc. What can be the reason? One of the main reasons is uh, the successful person are the person who make a lot of effort. It's the common thing. But just making effort does not mean it is a right effort. Thieves make also a lot of effort to steal something. I saw one documentary how thieves practice their skill, especially the pickpocket. They practice in this way. They put two sheets of paper together and they have some razor. And in the three seconds, they cut the paper. The front paper is cut, but the back paper remained the same. They practiced in that way for many years to successfully steal. So it's not right effort. Stalin, Hitler, they, they are our colleagues. Eh? So right effort is the, the effort that eventually leads us to liberation. So Jesus said, what 
For what benefit is it for a person to gain the whole world, yet lose his own soul? So we need to contemplate for what we make effort. The seventh is right concentration, samyak sambadi. The eighth is right mindfulness, samyak smriti. Right concentration and right mindfulness was taught in the context of meditation. Right concentration, right samadhi, the wisdom arises when? When our mind starts to settle down. I always use this analogy when the ripples disappear from the surface of the pond, the surface can accurately reflect the moon, the wisdom our innate wisdom. When do we make wrong decision? When our mind is not calm, we are upset, then many times the decision that we make at that time is very misleading. It's a very wrong choice. So, Right concentration and right mindfulness is the foundation for us to successfully practice all these eightfold path: right action, right speech, right livelihood, etc. Right concentration and right mindfulness is basically related with the dealing with our mind. The other is the dealing with our speech and the action, dealing with our mind. Controlling our mind is the most difficult thing. Controlling our mind. We can control our tongue, we can control our action, but Conquering our mind is the, the last field that we need to conquer. That's why in one Buddhism, founding master gave us 30 precepts. The last three precepts are do not be greedy, do not harbor hatred, do not be delu deluded. It's related with our mind. Especially these days, uh, we have to think about uh, so many things. Uh, if we do not properly think, uh, we cannot make it in this uh, society. Our jobs are usually mentally demanding, not physically. The people go to Harvard not because uh, they have a very big heart, because they are smart. Eh? So. This society demands us to constantly think about something. This society leads us to drain our, to drain our energy. We are living in the society that, that's bombarded by so many information. That's why it's very important to set some time to practice sitting meditation. At least, uh, it can be walking meditation outside uh, to have some quiet time to conserve our energy. So, there is a Chinese saying, the saddest thing is uh, to scatter our mind and the spirit. And the last uh, uh, path is right awareness or right mindfulness, uh, samyak smriti.
Chinese translated right awareness, zheng yam. Zheng means right. Yam means this one, mindfulness or awareness. Yam. It's the composite letter. Yam means remembrance or awareness, mindfulness. Do you know what this upper part means? Yeah. Right now. Gum means right now. At this very moment. This lower part means yeah, mind and heart, mind, consciousness. When our mind is at the present well, at the present moment, it is right mindfulness. Coming back to the present moment, our mind coming back to the present moment is right mindfulness. It's exactly the definition of mindfulness by the Buddha himself. We are shackled and bothered by so many thoughts, so many memories that happened in the past, even some childhood uh, memory. It's not real thing. It's just a memory. Special kinds. Memory is a special kind of a thought. Yeah? Or many people worry about our future. Anxiety, concern, etc. Or some expectation. It's also some special kinds of our thoughts. They are not the reality. Coming back to the present moment is coming back to the reality which we train ourselves on the meditation cushion. Whenever some thoughts arise, thoughts travel from the past to the future. So when you come back to our breathing, or to some bodily sensation, it's coming back to the present moment, to the reality. It is the path to break the, the darkness of our ego, ego-created world. So that's why Jesus said, isn't today's worries enough? I read uh, this uh, story uh, from one uh, Christian pastor's uh, uh, book. There was a person uh, who received a very expensive uh, rare wine from his uh, friend. It's a very expensive one. And uh, he was uh, tempted to drink it with his uh, friend, but he thought, Wow, no, let's save it for some more special occasion. So when he was married, he was tempted to consume that wine. No, let's wait. So when he had his first child, he, he did not open the bottle. When he became the vice president of his company, but he still postponed opening the bottle. But the bottle was opened at his funeral. <laughs> so if we lose this present moment, how can this present moment be perfect? It's not a realistic thing. Perfect is a very subjective thing. If we lose this present moment, if we cannot enjoy this present moment, we cannot enjoy our life. My hobby in Korea was mountain climbing. I loved to climb to Chirisa Mountain, one of the biggest mountains in Korea. We learned we needed to enjoy each and every step of our journey. Of course, we stand at the top of the mountain, on top of the peak, it's great uh, to look over the whole view. But 
Each and every step is very important, just like our life. We need to learn, we need to practice, we need to remember to enjoy this very moment. Right mindfulness is taught in the context of a sitting meditation, but you are not Zen priest. You spend most of your time in your daily activities at home or in your workplace, etc. So, right mindfulness in our daily life is to our lay persons is far more important. Right mindfulness. Think about uh, some people mindlessly throw away the cigarette butt, and uh, it can cause a forest fire. Hmm? One very a mindfulness action can cause a disaster. Hmm? All the Korean generation know this name. Shin Changwan, Shin Chang, legendary thief. He's a very fam- he became very famous. He, he was very good at sneaking, sneaking into rich person's house and opened the safe, uh, etc. He escaped maximum security prison a couple of times. He's very good. According to his uh, memoir, How he could become a thief? He wrote in in this way. He was uh, born and raised in a very poor family. He could not pay the tuition when he was in the elementary school. The tuition is, even though it's not uh, expensive, he could not pay the tuition within the time due. When he was uh, in his fourth grade. So as usual, he could not pay the tuition within the time specified. I don't think the teacher is a bad person, but he may have some bad day or he was pushed by the school principal. The teacher told him, scolded him, you did not pay the tuition. Why you are here? Get out of the classroom. When he heard that word, then he wrote, in my mind, a seed of a devil was planted and he could feel it start to grow in his mind. And he walked walked on a very deviant path after that. So that simple, mindless uh, word uh, changes uh, that person's uh, destiny, destiny. Each and every person has uh, some unwholesome tendency, or some unwholesome mind that has some bad habits. Uh, sometimes it's very catastrophic, very disastrous. It can be minor, it may not be serious, but some are very serious things. If we, whether you are Buddhist or not, whether you are a practitioner or not, if they do not practice the mindfulness in that area, the life cannot be fruitful or successful or we cannot live in a contented life. How can we cultivate the whole field? When I was in junior high, my uncle taught me how to play tennis. I was not good at that. I was a little nervous. And that all my muscles were pretty tense. And I held the racket always tight. But my uncle told me, 
You do not have to hold the racket tight always. It, it will exhaust yourself. So only when the ball hit the racket, you can hold it tight. That's enough. Likewise, we cannot be mindful in each and every corner in our life. It exhausts us. It does not work. But in several areas, you can see the precepts. Or we know what is a good or what is a weakness in our mind. In several areas, we need to con conquer that weakness to fix ourselves. So meditation is a like uh, uh, our founding master used this analogy. There is a fire. The Buddha said that the world is uh, on fire. Your mind is on fire. If there a cauldron, the water is uh, boiling inside the cauldron, then the source of the fire, if you extinguish the fire, Beneath the cauldron is just like your meditation practice. But in order to cool down the water, what's a very efficient and the practical way is, why don't you take out the hot water and pour some very icy water inside the cauldron? Taking out the hot water and the Taking in cold water is a right mindfulness in our daily life. It should be practiced in concert, together. Both are important. So, one in India, one Brahman was washing in his body in the river, Ganges River. They think it's a holy water. So that Hindu priest, that Brahman said, I would like to liberate myself by washing my sin in this uh, Ganges river. The wise man next to him said, if uh, this river washes your sin, washes the sin of the man, it would be fish first who could enter liberation. It's not by performing some ritual or some other things, uh, by walking a for the path, we can open the door of uh, liberation. So the Eight for the path is the path that Buddha walked. In order to discover that path, uh, he made a lot of trial and uh, errors, but it's a big blessing. He already showed that we can just uh, follow that path. So our founding master said, such was the case when I had no one to guide me on the path of seeking the truth. The absence of guidance led me to undergo various extreme ascetic practices. On the other hand, how fortunate you are to have me as your experienced teacher who have paved a great wide path for any blind person to follow with a sense of assurance and has built a comfortable house in which you can devote yourself to your studies free from care or worries. So we learned this uh, A for the path uh, clearly. So our job is to actually walk on the path. Yeah. Okay, thank you.